Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. I'm Sara Bertilsson. Today's guest doesn't shy away from controversy. In 2014, the then Swedish Foreign Minister Margot Wallström launched the Feminist Foreign Policy, a world's first, hailed by some as progressive and dismissed by others as provocative. Margot Wallström, welcome to France 24. Thank you very much. First, explain to us, what is the Feminist Foreign Policy? Well, it's based on the notion that more women means more peace, that it's a matter of uh, involving and engaging women in peace processes, and that is good for both peace and, and security in, in every country, and the fact that women are still discriminated against. And it's a very practical policy. So I said that it should be led by three words that all start with an R. First of all, check on rights. Uh, do women enjoy the same legal and human rights? Secondly, uh, R as in represented. Uh, are they represented? Are they around the tables where important decisions are being made? Uh, do they have the influence, political and other influence in society that they deserve? And thirdly, resources. Do resources go to meet the needs of women and girls as well? And it starts with checking on the statistics and facts, of course. So to me, it's a very, very practical tool. But based on the fact that, that women make up half of the world's population, but they are not represented where foreign policy is uh, uh, being designed. Some are saying that this is more of a fancy branding than a real change in a, uh, uh, yeah, cut with tradition. What is your reaction to No, that? it's a very practical tool because it is carried out through all our embassies around the world. And they do exactly that. They look at, so can, we, can girls go to school in this country? Are they married away before they are even 15 years of age? Uh, do they have the right to inherit? Um, as men uh, have. What about their representation in uh, political decision-making? Can we help that process? Uh, and they insist on having, for example, gender-based budgets. And we insisted also in the UN Security Council that uh, the role of women when it comes to peace and security should also always be acknowledged, uh, be in the text in resolutions that they came as briefers to the Security Council. So we have been consistent in making it a very practical change in, in the world. And I think we can already see very good results from that. Yeah, you've, even, you've even launched a handbook, a guide to how to make your own feminist foreign policy. Could this be Sweden's next big export after H&M, Ikea and ABBA? I don't know. Well, I think it has already started to, to make an impact. And we've seen now that, for example, a country like Mexico also introduced a feminist foreign policy, Canada and other countries. And I think even here in France, uh, this is now a concept that is being used. And, um, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's a given that without more women means more peace. And uh, we have to engage uh, women also when it comes to, to foreign policy and security policy. Uh, and uh, it is acknowledged since a long time back that, that uh, women and men have different roles and, um, and take part in, in peace uh, uh, negotiations, for example. Uh, so um, we will continue and pursue a, a feminist foreign policy also in the future. Now, the feminist for foreign policy is not the only reason why you made headlines during your years as the Swedish foreign minister. And now, uh, thanks to a new documentary called The Feminista, uh, we get to follow you during four of your five years in office uh, and through some quite turbulent times, I think you can say. Uh, we're going to have a look at a clip from that documentary and we'll continue to talk just after. I am very honoured to explain to you that the new Swedish government is going to pursue a feminist foreign policy. Solidarity har nu en väldigt stark övertygelse kring hur jag tycker att det måste omsättas i politisk handling. Och då, då måste man få mig vara lov att ta konsekvensen av det. Politiken i Saudiarabien är långt ifrån någon feministisk politik. Man kan inte använda något annat ord än en diktatur. Utrikesminister Margot Wallström i stan. Jag har haft en stor 
Världen bakom kritiken mot utrikesminister Margot Wallströms uttalande. Margot Wallström har blivit indragen i skandalerna i kommunalt. Att gå förbi bostadskön. Det blir utomrättsliga avrättningar. I think what the uh, Swedish foreign minister said is outrageous. Now the uh, filmmaker Victor Nordenskjöld, he followed you over four years. Uh, this is a very rare insight to a very secretive business. Why did you agree to this? Well, it has to be based on trust. I, I trusted that he would do a, a good job in in uh, um, putting on display how how you work uh, as a, a political leader. And uh, of course, I, I knew I was hesitant at, at first and suspicious as as well. But uh, uh, I also. Um, uh, thought that it was a good idea to to follow a few of the big issues that uh, was on on my table and uh, follow the whole process and show all the aspects of it. And I think maybe the public also is interested in in how things happen and and what what is behind the the scenes or what you uh, would see in uh, reported normally. Definitely. Um we could see there um, those comments that you made about Saudi Arabia. Uh, did you ever expect the reaction to be as violent as it was? I think it was a combination of um, uh, of things. Um, the fact that we also had uh, recognized uh, Palestine um, uh, meant that we sort of took on a, a particular role and we were in the spotlight uh, because of that. And I think that also uh, made it maybe a more uh, sort of uh, violent reaction than, than we had expected. But we knew that the decision to recognize Palestine would be met by, by criticism and, and attacks on, on us and me personally as, as well. But... Uh, um, you know, you have to um, sometimes take the take the consequences also of uh, of um, a decision of of that kind. You don't regret the comments you made about no, Saudi Arabia. No, I don't. I don't uh, regret it, and uh, I think that uh, uh, we have since also used all our diplomatic tools so that we can have you know we can meet with mutual uh, respect we have different uh, views on on things and different policies but we can still talk to each other and and this is uh, this is what we have have done uh, as well and i think the fact that we uh, were elected also uh, unexpectedly to to the uh, security council uh, shows that they they also trust us and respect us back you have been a politician for more than 40 years, uh, during a period in which women's rights have made very important gains. However, over these last few years, we've seen a, a change on the political scene. We see an increasing number of right-wing conservative leaders, both, both here in Europe, but also elsewhere in the world. Uh, do you agree that we are today living in a time of backlash against women's rights? Yes, both yes and no. Uh, I mean, we should also uh, now and then take a step back and look at what has been achieved. And that's thanks to all these amazing women that rise up and, and come together to demonstrate, to, to say me too and, and wanting to see actions uh, after that, um, who are willing to take, on, to take on a role in their respective countries and context and do not want to uh, be seen only as victims but but actors in in their uh, in their countries and in their lives and i think that's the the power and the force that we have to use but what has been very serious is of course the backlash in terms of less money to sexual and reproductive health uh, projects around the world where uh, actually the us has withdrawn from a number of these uh, very very life-saving uh, projects and where we had to sort of cover up for, for that and, and try to or compensate for that. 
uh, but also in the rhetoric that uh, there is uh, hatred against uh, women. And for example, women journalists are are exposed to, to that in, in a way that is totally unacceptable. So the, the fight has to continue and we is, have... Is there to, hope that, they, you know, that we can change this? Yeah, we have to change this. We have to change it because I think that this is where hope lies also for a very uh, um, uh, uh, troubled world and a very dangerous uh, uh, world uh, where, where women, uh, I, th I think it's their turn. And uh, that goes for, for politics as, as well. So uh, um, we just have to, to continue and uh, get organized and active uh, and continue to, to work. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for here today. The documentary The Feminist uh, is part of the official selection of this year's International Documentary Film Festival FIPA Doc in Biarritz here in France. I believe that's where you're heading next. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with a filmmaker to, uh, to Biarritz. It's the first time that we appear, both of us, in, in one of these uh, showings. So that would be interesting. Thank you very much, Margot Wallström, for being a guest here today. Thank you, Miss. Thank Google. you for watching France 24. More news and headlines coming up. Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Reporting from across West Africa. All the latest in politics, economics and the arts in Africa on France 24. Our journalists are in every region every country to report on the emergence of a continent of unparalleled riches bringing you africa's stories on france 24. thanks for joining us see you again liberté equality actuality